Hey guys, it's Dana. And today is the day to pull that sewing machine out of the box because we're gonna learn how to sew. That's right, Sewing 101. Welcome to your introductory sewing class. Today we're gonna go over all the basics for using a sewing machine. And if you don't have a machine already, don't worry. This might motivate you to go out and get one or put it on your Christmas list. Or you might have a friend that has a sewing machine that would love to sew with you. Or if yours has been sitting in the bottom of that closet, it is time to pull that thing out and actually use it. Now before we get to the machine, I just wanna say two things. Number one, if you really wanna motivate yourself to sew, you need to keep your machine out where you can use it all the time. That might be in a small table in the corner of your bedroom or in the kids' playroom. When my kids were young, my sewing machine kind of took over the small kitchen table in our Los Angeles apartment. And while I'm sure my husband didn't love that, it was really nice to be able to come in and sew whenever I wanted. So I will really encourage you to try to find your own little space so that you can keep it out for use all the time. Number two, you don't need a fancy machine to really enjoy sewing. There are a lot of add-on features and buttons that make a machine really fun, but all you need is a machine that goes forward and backward, which every machine does, a zigzag stitch, and a buttonhole feature. The rest of the stuff is just kind of the cherry on top. If you have kind of a low-end introductory machine, that's great. I don't want you to feel inhibited to get sewing. But I found that when people are frustrated with sewing, it's typically because they have a low-end machine. So if you think you'll be sewing for a longer period of time, or if you're looking for a new machine, I would go for something that is really a quality machine that will last for a long time, rather than quantity of buttons. I'm sewing on a baby lock brand machine called Lyric, and I love it because it's a quality machine, but I've also sewn for long enough that I really do appreciate all those added little buttons and features that I'm always showing you guys, like the needle threader and the cutting feature and those types of things. But if you're just getting started, Baby Lock also makes some great introductory machines. They're named after different girls like Rachel, Catherine, Elizabeth, and those are great machines that will have you sewing for a long time. Okay, enough talking about the machine. Let's actually plug it in. Your machine comes with a power cord and that goes into the side and then it plugs into the wall. And then it also comes with a foot pedal and that plugs into the side as well. And let's turn it on. Yay! Okay, here's how the foot pedal works. Let me put my presser foot down. When you press on it with your foot, it makes the needle go up and down. Pretty simple. Now what is actually happening with your machine when you're sewing? Well, there's a thread on the top of the machine and there's a thread in the bottom called the bobbin, B-O-B-B-I-N. And when the thread comes through the top, it goes to the needle and that needle goes down into the bobbin and kind of loops around with a little hook. This is all very technical here. And then it creates a chain of stitches, which is what sewing is. Okay, so let's thread your machine. There are a variety of different threads to use when you're sewing. You've probably seen these cone threads before at the fabric store, and these are better used on a serger, which is a different type of machine that we'll talk about at a later time. So let's set those aside. These are general all-purpose thread, and this is what you wanna use in your machine here. They come in different colors, obviously, and in different sizes. And the size just depends on your project. If you're doing just a little project, you might just need a little bit of orange. I'm gonna use this in the top of my machine. And then, how do you get the thread into the bobbin? Well, let me show you. Each machine comes with some bobbin spools. And if you need to buy more, which you probably will, because it's nice to have them threaded for a variety of different colors that you own, you can buy these at the fabric store, but it's important to buy the one that is specific to your machine. You read your owner's manual and it will tell you all that information. Okay, go over to your machine, take your bobbin spool and place it over here. And your machine might be just a little bit different, just again, read through your owner's manual and it will tell you the specifics to your own machine. But every machine has some of the general same concepts. Place your thread on the spool here. Mine has a little plate that goes over the top to help it stay in place. And some machines have the thread going horizontally. Some machines have it going vertically. Just different ways that machines are set up. Okay, now follow the guidelines on your machine. So I start at number one. It's pretty easy. Go around, the arrow says to go up, go up to number two. And then I come around this little hooky, round thing, that's really technical. Go over to the bobbin spool, and I'm just gonna wind it around a few times just to get it started. I'm gonna cut this little tail off. Okay, then I push it over here till it locks. There we go, now we're ready to do the bobbin. Use your presser foot, and just like that, you can see it winding up. Now you can go until the machine stops it for you, it won't let you over thread the bobbin. But if you just have a small project and you don't wanna waste too much of your 
top thread, you might just thread a little bit. It's just whatever your needs are. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Cut my thread, and then take your bobbin and go over to the bottom of your machine here. Just remove that little plate, and then drop it in. And again, follow the guidelines on your machine. Mine tells me to go around like this. And then to cut my thread, and then I place this back on top. Some machines have a bobbin that goes in through the front, and some have a top loader. Just different mechanics for different machines. Okay, go back up to your top thread here and take it out from where it just was. And we're gonna start over with those same markings. We're gonna start at number one, but we're gonna thread the whole machine now. Go to number one, number two, around here, then I go down. And again, a lot of machines thread in quite a similar fashion. And then there's a little hook that I'm going around inside. I can't really see it, but it tells me to just arrow around. Come down, then go down here. And then what I'm always talking about on my machine is this awesome automatic needle threader where I just press this lever and it threads for me. But what if you don't have that fancy feature? No problem. What I like to do is first trim the end of the thread just to give it a nice clean cut. Then I actually lick the end of the thread. You didn't know I was gonna do that, did you? It keeps all the fibers just in place and goes through the needle easier. Go through there, ah, oh, we did it. Okay, and then pull it through. And then I always like to make the thread go under the presser foot and back to this left corner. That's a great way to start with your threads going back that direction. Okay, we're all threaded, let's sew. Okay, we're ready to sew, but I wanna talk just a little bit more about what's going on down here. There's a lot of metal contraptions and things that might look a little scary. This metal plate right here is called the throat plate, and these little zigzaggy things down here are called the feed dogs. Sewing machine has awesome terminology. And if you ever need to remove something from your machine, if a thread gets stuck down there, your machine will come with a little tool that can help you unscrew that. If you're having major problems with your machine, you definitely wanna take it into a shop, but don't be scared of your machine. It's okay to try to fix some little problems that might be there. Okay, this right here is called the presser foot. And what that does is when you lower it, it presses down on your fabric and the throat plate and the feed dogs, and it helps all the fabric go through as you're sewing. The presser foot can be removed right here, and your machine will come with a variety of different feet. Some are for zippers, which I've shown you before, or the Teflon presser foot, sewing with vinyl. And those in my machine are just kept in this cool little compartment down here. So, this is a standard presser foot, and it has a really nice surface area to help hold your fabric in place as you sew. I'm gonna put that back on. It just snaps right in place, like that. Okay, I've got two pieces of fabric here, which is typically how you're going to be sewing, a front and a back to your bag or your shirt or whatever it is. Come to your machine, place your presser foot down, and then let's just start sewing and see what happens. It's working! Okay, now at the beginning and the end of your stitch, you always wanna do a little back stitch. I know I'm always saying that. I press this reverse button right here, and it goes backwards for me. And that is just going to kind of tie off and sort of seal the end, I guess. Otherwise, you're fabric would start coming apart when you took it off the machine. Okay, so do your back stitch and then go back forward again. There you go. Now if you feel like you're going too fast and it's getting out of control, you can adjust your speed control, which is an option on my machine. If yours doesn't have one, just learn to control your foot a little slower and just continue to go straight down. When you're just starting out, the best thing to do is to just keep practicing. So straight lines over and over again. Okay, I'm getting to the end of my fabric here. I'm gonna do another back stitch to seal off the other end. And then on mine, I can cut my threads, which does it automatically for me. If yours doesn't have that option, you can press your needle up button and that brings the needle up. Or you can always turn your machine manually, which is a great thing to know. There's a control on the side here, which I can turn and it makes my needle go up and down. And sometimes that's great if you're going over an area that's really thick and you just can't get through the fabric. It's nice to just crank it slowly and get through that hard spot. Okay, so. I'm gonna pull my stuff off and cut my threads. And there you go. And you see what we've done there is we've created a chain stitch, which is what I was talking about, the top thread and the bobbin thread coming together to create your stitch. Now what we've also done is we have created a seam. A seam is this right here where the two pieces of fabric come together. And this area right here is called the seam allowance. You've probably heard me say that before. And what that means is the distance from the edge of the fabric to where the stitch mark is. If you're not sure what your seam allowance was, take a little ruler and let's measure right here and I can see, oh, that's a quarter inch over, so it's a quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll find that all these seam allowance markings are right here on your throat plate. It says quarter inch, three eighths inch, half inch, five eighths inch. 
And those are important to pay attention to when you're sewing. So say you're sewing a shirt pattern and it says, use a half inch seam allowance. When you come over here, you wanna find where the half inch mark is and line up your fabric with that. And then you know that you always are going to be sewing in a half inch seam allowance line. And keep your fabric in the same line the whole time that you're going down. That's a really important thing to pay attention to because otherwise your shirt, dress, garment, whatever you're sewing is not gonna fit properly unless you follow the right seam allowance. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. What if you wanna sew around a curved piece of fabric? Say we're making a baby bunting, little garland type thing. Well, I've got two pieces of fabric here and you should know that there is a right side to your fabric and a wrong side. The right side is just the nice side that looks great. So you always wanna sew with the two right sides together. This way your seam will be hidden inside of the fabric. Okay, go over to your machine and let's say I'm gonna to try to use a quarter inch seam allowance again. I'm gonna do my best to keep the edge of my presser foot, which is about a quarter of an inch, lined up with the edge of my fabric the whole time. It's really awesome to use your presser foot as a guide. Okay, do a little forward and back stitch. And then, as I get to the curved area, I'm just gonna use my hands, both hands, to kind of pull it around as I go. This works great with a woven fabric, which is what this is, because it doesn't stretch as you go. If you're sewing with a knit fabric, which does stretch, you don't wanna do this. You'd wanna stop, lift your presser foot, pivot little by little. Okay, just keep going. Again, it's great to go slow here. And as you can see, I'm trying to line up my presser foot the whole time with the edge of that fabric. Go, go, go around. And the more practice you have, the better you will get at this. It's also important on curves to really be as consistent as you can. You don't want any jagged turns. Otherwise, when you turn it inside out, you will really notice that. Okay, there we go. I made it to the end. Do a back stitch, cut my threads. And there we go. Let's turn it and see how we did. I turn it right side out, and you would probably want to press this with an iron to make it really flat. But you can see there, that looks really nice. Good job. Okay. What happens if you make a mistake when you're sewing? I never do that. <laughs> well, you have a little tool called a seam ripper, and that's to rip out the seams or the mistake areas. So let's say that I didn't do a great seam allowance or one of my areas was kind of jagged. I'm gonna take my seam ripper, just go right into one of your stitches with your seam ripper, and it has a sharp edge on here, and that's gonna rip the thread for you. And there's different ways to rip out your seams. Who knew there would be an art to that? But you can do one stitch at a time. Sometimes I like to take out one and then move down a few stitches, take out the next one, move down and take a few more, and then I can actually just kind of pull the fabrics apart and sometimes they'll pull apart for me. That just saves a little bit of time. So do whatever works for you. So let's say, okay, that was the part that I messed up and now I wanna fix that and re-sew that part. Well, you just go back to your machine and start at the same part where you finished off. Let's see right there, okay. I'm gonna sew on top of a little bit of the existing thread and do a back stitch, and that's gonna tie everything together. Then I'm gonna sew the new part and make it a little bit prettier and a little bit better. And then go to where the thread begins again, do a back stitch, forward, and then it's all fixed. Say that wasn't so bad. You will have to use your seam ripper more than you think, but that's okay. We learn from our mistakes, right? Few more things I wanna to talk to you about. Let's talk about what's going on over here in your machine. Now my machine is digital, meaning it has a digital display and a little computer inside. Yours might be a manual machine, which is how I sewed for many years with knobs and different things like that. Both work great. Again, it's about the quality of your machine rather than the quantity of buttons. But I wanna point out a few things over here. So right here, this is the width of your stitch. And that really is only important if you're sewing with a zigzag. It means how wide those zigzags are going. If you had it on a five, it'd be really wide. If you have it on a one, it's really tiny. But when you're sewing a straight stitch, the reason that's important is that it moves the position of your needle. When you go this way, your needle moves that direction. When I go this way, my needle comes back this direction. And why that's important is that you might wanna use that to help change your seam allowance. Say you wanna line up your presser foot, but you need a larger seam allowance, move your needle over. Or maybe you're doing a specialty project where your presser foot just can't quite get around something or you're quilting, or there's just a variety of different reasons that you might wanna change your needle position. For my machine, I usually sew just around a 3.5, which is great for my machine. It's actually kind of the default setting, and I can tell because it has a little black box that lights up saying this is 
the average typical thing you're gonna wanna start with. Okay, this right here affects the length of your stitch. We just talked about width, now we're talking about how long each of those individual stitches are on the chain. If I go down to say like a one or even lower, that's gonna give me a really little tiny stitch. Or I can go all the way up to a five, which is gonna be, give me a really long stitch. And longer stitches are great when you're gathering fabric or something like that, or if you're sewing with vinyl and you don't want your fabric perforating quite as closely together. But a great middle of the road is to sew at a 2.5. Now this other one over here affects your tension on your machine, but typically that's not something you're gonna to have to mess with. And the rest of these buttons here, there's a lot of them. They toggle through different menus, things like that. I can change my needle position this way as well. Uh, twin needle, I can change the light on and off. So many different things. These controls are gonna change your different stitches and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot going on, but what is best to do is to go through your owner's manual. And what I like to do is read it through the first time I open my machine and get familiar with it. Then I put it away, sew with my machine for a few months, and then I get the manual back out again and read through it. And now that you've had some experience, it makes a whole lot more sense. Okay, last thing I'm gonna show you is up at the top here. This is where you have all the different stitches that your machine can do. Yours might come with five stitches or it might come with like 200. Again, you're not gonna need all of these, but they're really fun to play with. And some of them are important, like your zigzag stitch. Mine comes with a variety of different zigzag stitches. Or I've shown you before some of these overlock stitches that create kind of a stretchy stitch that can stretch with your fabric. There's a variety of different buttonhole stitches that I can do on my machine with different functions and different shapes to the buttonholes. Go through your owner's manual, grab a piece of fabric, and just have fun exploring all of these different stitches. I program them down here on my machine and just see what your machine does. And those, my friends, are all the basics you need to know to get sewing. I'm really excited to see what you do. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com. And for more information on sewing machines, go to babylock.com, where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time. Bye.